Well, we want to say welcome to the Love Church Story Podcast. It's really cool. We really felt called to do this so that we can teach people how to honor God with their testimony, but also to help people. Because when you share your testimony, so many other people grab on to hope and are so encouraged. So I just want to say thank you, Rachel Holly, for being with us today. For those of you that don't know, Rachel sits in our executive team, and I would love for us to pray and then you to launch into how you even got plugged into Love Church at first as a volunteer and then made your way all the way up to the executive team in such a short time, if that's okay. Sounds great. So Father, we give you this time together. We pray that not only would Rachel be anointed, that people would be touched knowing you are always available, you are always there, and you always care. So we just give you this time and say thank you for your testimony in Rachel's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so why don't you share with us? So you sit on the executive team today, but where'd you start off? Tell us a little bit about how you got to Love Church and what happened. Yeah, so I had been on a worship team at my old church for several years before I came here. Um, Came to Love Church and almost right away, the Lord put it on my heart to see about joining the worship team and start serving there. And I resisted, I just didn't think that was a great idea. And so I just put it off for a little bit until finally I, I relented and I was obedient to the Lord. And I can remember I sat with you and we talked about, um, wanted to join the worship team, wanted to play the piano. It was all I really knew how to do. But at the time there was already somebody on keys every week. And so I said, I I know you don't need me, but maybe I can come and pray, something like that. And you actually said, no, this is actually her last week on (laughs) on keys. And so I was just blown away. We needed you. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Only the Lord knew. Um, So yeah, I joined the worship team, fell in love with the team and just love being around them. Um, Started volunteering more like in an administrative capacity and then years later, the invitation to come on to staff and then a while later, invitation to the executive team, so. So it's been a journey. How many years would you say overall? Like you started? 10 years. Wow. Yeah. So cool. Just just over 10 years now. I love how God works. He's so, he's just amazing. I know um, if you could, you, I know you were raised in the faith, but if you can give us a little bit like a cliff note version of how you came to know the Lord, how mm-hmm. old you were, and kind of your family upbringing so that you can clue people in on, on where Rachel came from. Yeah, yeah. Well, I came from a little tiny, tiny town of like 98 people out in the country. Um, Whoa. A little different than West Omaha. And uh, I mean, rode a horse to school sometimes. We had cows, we had chickens. Like, it was just living the country life very much. So um, I loved it. My brother and I would go disappear and play with frogs or play in the creek or you know do <laughs> something outside all day long, and uh, I just loved that life being out in the country. Um, my mom and dad were both Bible believing Christians, and so I grew up just having that understanding and being surrounded by that. So my mom actually taught me how to read out of out of the Bible, wow. a kid's version, thankfully. But um, so I would say I was about four years old when I gave my life to the Lord. I just um, found a corner of the house one day and just prayed and gave my life to Jesus and um, have been walking with him pretty much ever since. Whoa, that is incredible. I can't even remember when I was four. I hope (laughs) I don't have many memories of that time, but I do remember that. That's incredible. One of my sons too. So I understand being raised in the church. Okay. So very different, right? Because the truth of the word of God is built in day by day, moment by moment, yeah. from the time that you're young. So you have the privilege of knowing God and experiencing so much about who He is. Yeah. And really, that's what this, I think, this portion of your testimony is all about. You really want to share with people like who He's been to you throughout your life. Now, there were some things that had happened. If you want to, if you could, clue us in at the age 14 to 16, some things that had happened in your life that kind of had you doubt, question, and, and the words that you used were set up a false system of belief. So yeah. if you could hit on some of those different experiences that maybe triggered that false system of belief, although you were raised in the Word of God for so many years, you knew Him so well, your parents had taught you so much, you learned to read from the Bible, yet there were some times in your life that you doubted God's presence, you doubted who He was, and it made you question for at least 24 hours (laughs) if if He was there and if He cared. So can you clue us in on some of those times and maybe how the Lord brought you in and through those different circumstances? Yeah. Yeah, so it actually started back during grade school. And, you know, being in a small town like that, there was literally one other girl that was my age in the whole town. So we were kind of friends by default. Um, went to grade school together, and uh, we were essentially best friends because, you know, who else are you going to hang out with? Um, but 
from the very beginning, occasionally she would be invited to hang out with older kids, and when that happened, she would, you know, ditch me, and there would be teasing and just different things that would happen. And so, kind of all throughout grade school, this most significant friendship that I had um, was kind of a day by day, like, am I going to be rejected today, or am I not? Mm. Are we friends today, or are we not? You know, so it was a lot of back and forth and unpredictability um, in that relationship. And then simultaneously, just relationship with my dad was pretty um, unpredictable as well. And so I really grew up with this, uh, you call it false belief system. I started getting this mindset of can't trust anybody, be on your guard, you don't know when it's gonna happen, just stay guarded, you're on your own. Um, but simultaneously, so this mindset is happening with people, simultaneously I'm walking with the Lord and the Holy Spirit through all these years and believing he's here all the time. He's just constantly present. And so these two things are just kind of developing side by side. <clears throat> well, when I was 16, um, I, I had an uncle who was just, he was a superhero to me. I mean, he, he was really the, the male figure in my life that spoke value to me. I felt he understood me. We we're super close. Um, just very, very, very dear to me. And uh, right around my 16th birthday, he was diagnosed with cancer. Hmm. And um, he had gone into the hospital for back pain and when he was there they discovered that he had uh, his body was just full of cancer and he had a tumor on his spine that was um, causing the pain and so it was really aggressive cancer they never quite identified it as one specific strain or anything but um, it was uh, shortly before Christmas that he passed away and so just for me, I was 16, it was the first loss I really experienced and it was this hugely significant person to me. Um, and it really sparked this, this uh, kind of spiral of doubt of, is God betraying me just like the people do? Mm. You know, like mm. I've trusted God to this point, but is he, is he untrustworthy also? Um, and I mean, I would say it really was about a six month span where I just wrestled with this question and I was, I was grieving, um, not just the loss of my uncle, but I was grieving um, just that loss of security with the Lord. And at the end of that six months, I had kind of gotten into a deep depression and everything. And um, I finally just said to the Lord, I said, I I'm done. I've, I've been trying to trust you and you're not giving me any reason to, and this doesn't make sense. And you broke my heart and I can't, I can't pretend that I'm okay with this anymore. And so I'm done. And uh, that lasted two days. <laughs> I was gonna say, what did done look like for a 16 year old yes. rejecting God? Yeah, yeah. It, um, nothing really happened. Nothing really changed in my life. I didn't go on any crazy spree of sin or anything like that. Um, but I just, I broke up with God, if you will, for that, mm. for that two days. Um, and then on the, on the third day, I just said, you know what, this is, this is just crazy. I, I know God is real. Resurrection life. Right. Yes. Yeah. I said, I know God is real and I, I know he's here. I still know that he's here next to me. Mm. And so what am I doing? Mm. Pretending that that's not real, you know? And, um, you know, I can't say I, I ever got answers to those questions of why God allowed this, this loss and, um, why he allowed me to be so hurt in those moments. You know, I, those questions never got answered. I still miss him very frequently. You know, he's just, he, he's so dear. But um, what I did settle in my heart was, it's kind of my Peter moment. We talked about this yeah. before, you know, when Peter says to Jesus, you have the words of life, where else am I gonna go? And that's what it was in my heart is, I, I know right. who you are, what else am I gonna do? The options are to know who you are and walk with you or to know who you are and walk without you. And that's just, that's an easy choice. It's so great that you even referenced that with Peter. Is there, there's no other place for me to go. What am I yeah. going to do? Right. One, of the, one of the things um, you're reminding me, well, two things are really sticking out to me while you were sharing your testimony so far. Just the maturity, first of all, you're still young. And the maturity of a young woman to look back at life and realize, I'm setting up a system of belief that's not aligned with who God mm -hmm. is. And at the age of 16, though you had doubt, though you had hurt, though you had pain, still willing to yield to Holy Spirit and choose His way when so many of us, and including myself, have not. And so just the maturity, clearly the foundation had been set of you experiencing Him as Lord of your life and you experiencing Him so intimately even though you still had questions of why, yeah. right? Just that willingness to yield, it just speaks 
so much of your maturity in in him and that and and the the road ahead you still had some things that you were going to face yeah. we'll hear in just a couple of minutes the road ahead still was a little bit bumpy yeah yeah and and i think it's um it's phenomenal to witness and i think it's like i'm thinking of other people listening in right now that might be going through something where they're questioning god they're doubting god in that very moment what would you say to them like okay my way, I'm, I'm so tired of trusting. I'm so tired of waiting. I'm so tired of believing you have an answer, even though I don't feel like you answered me right now. What would you encourage? Yeah, I, I, it's a silly thing to say, but what I have really landed on is every time God and I disagree, I'm the one that's wrong. I and, love it. Um, I have disagreed with God many times over the course of my life, and I've, I've now been walking with him for 28 years. And over the course of 28 years, there's been lots of opportunities to hear from the Lord, to be obedient, to walk in His way, mm. and not have things turn out the way I thought they were supposed to. Yeah. And uh, and even the way I thought He promised they would, you know. So there's been lots of opportunities for that. And the, the thing I've <clears throat> landed on time after time is really after each disappointment, after each, um, this didn't go the way I thought it should. God's wisdom is so different than ours, and he, he, stayed, um, he stayed present, you know? And so I can look at who I know God to be, which is good, kind, loving, constantly present, he's my rock. And I can look at the disappointments, and if I, if I put those two things together and I say, am I going to translate this experience through the character of God, or am I gonna translate this experience through my feelings about it, I have to choose the character of God Come on. because my feelings change every second. I love it. So, The maturity and wisdom in such a young, beautiful <laughs> woman. I can't take it. I'm celebrating you out loud right now. Um, I want you to share just a little bit further in your life. You're still young in your walk with the Lord. I mean, you, you grew, yes, you grew up with him, but in the way of your own relationship with the Lord, you hit at an age 19 to 22, some rough patches, yeah. where again, your faith was tested. Can you just clue us in on a couple of those opportunities that God gave you to grow even deeper and even more securely in Him being there through some of those trials? Yeah, yeah, well, it's funny, with, with the mindset that I was expressing earlier of, you know, don't trust anyone, you never know what's gonna happen, um, once, once that, uh, that false belief system gets established. You know, everything that happens afterward gets interpreted through that same That's right. belief system. And so, you know, it, along the way, things happen because it's life and that that belief just continued to get reinforced in mm. my heart. And my response to that was I have to be able to control. You know, I have to be able to control everything that's happening so that I don't get hurt, so that I don't get betrayed, whatever it, it might be. Um, and so, it's, it's funny looking back now, I praise the Lord for allowing me to go through these things that started the process of breaking that stronghold because I'm glad I, I don't have to continue to walk in that false belief system now, but at the time, super painful. So between 19 and 22, a um, handful of different things happened and some of them were kind of at the same time, some of them were kind of spread out, but um, I had gone on a missions trip when I was 19 to Africa um, and was there for a couple of months and ended up coming back with some mystery illness and uh, it never really got an understanding of the origin <laughs> of, of the disease or the illness but um, the end result of it was just devastating illness and it took about a year for me to get down to the, the low point of it and then I spent a year um, just almost barely functional really mm. um, and you know it was I don't want to get into too many details with it. But yeah, but there was some significant change in your life. Mm -hmm. Why don't you share just a couple of those changes? Yeah. Yeah, well, I I mean, I lost about 40 pounds. Um, I couldn't eat really without severe pain or, or just getting sick in the moment. Um, my, my fingernails all died and fell out. Like, my body was just shutting down. Um, Specifically my, your liver, right? My liver, yeah. My adrenal system was all, all going down. And um, I would have kind of almost fainting spells. I would just be in constant pain all the time. At one point I ended up in the ER because my um, intestines were paralyzed. So just a lot of almost cascading issues. And you know, the doctors were kind of 
all across the board. One might say you're just an overly emotional girl with an upset stomach, and one might say, you know, at one point I had a scan where they said your organs are all misplaced because of tumors, and we have to do an emergency CAT scan to identify the issue. And um, the CAT scan happened, and there was nothing there. So just lots of unknowns and lots of confusing information all along the way. Um, and at the same time, um, just the church that I was in at that time was kind of bordering on the edge of prosperity gospel, kind of name it and claim it stuff. And so me being in, in ministry at that church, um, I, was, I was not experiencing the promises that were expected if you were walking in faith and you were walking right mm. with God. So there was just a lot of um, hurt feelings and sure. just tensions going on that way. Or doubt even about your own faith. A yeah. lot of doubt, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So lots of questions to the Lord about this. You know, I, I did what you said. I was serving you, and the end result here is I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to die. <laughs> you know, yeah. there was, there was it, about a year's worth where, um, you know, my my mom would pray every night, just like I hope you don't die. <laughs> Basically, I mean, it's a sad thing to say, but um, it was really tough. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, at the same time this is happening, um, I, had, I had started dating a guy that I had been great friends with since high school. Um, we'd been pretty much best friends since probably 15 or so, and um, loved each other, loved the Lord. We were doing ministry, you know, before I got super sick. Um, everything was all green lights, pretty much, and so we ended up deciding we were gonna get married, and um, things went downhill after that point. Mm -hmm. um, so it, the, the short version is basically his path was taking him away from the Lord and mine was drawing me closer to him. And in, in the midst of my illness, there wasn't a lot I could do for the Lord. I didn't understand um, why he was allowing this, but he was also my only, my only sustenance. You know, I was like, all I can do is just pray. And so that really drew me closer to him as, as time went on. So anyways, you have um, my fiance at the time just in the slow process of walking away from the Lord mm -hmm. and then me drawing closer to him. And um, as that tension continued to build, he would just start to pressure me to, to get married kind of on the spot. And these would turn into fights because I wasn't willing to. And, you know, it just inten tension increased for a while. So at one point we had a really big fight on the same issue. You know, he wanted to get married. I wasn't willing to at that time. And um, it became so clear to me at that moment, just this is not, this is not going where it, it needs to, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I took about a month and prayed through it. And um, at the end of it, I just, nothing had changed. Yeah. And I just knew unless I wanted to, to fight this tension my whole life, you know, I, I had to break things off. So I did. Um, but that was a huge, huge step of faith because I was like, oh, my, my whole yeah. life was wrapped around this guy. Right. So. And imagine painful, emotionally mm -hmm. painful. So again, mm -hmm. loss. Loss, yeah. Loss in another way. Um, take us back to health and healing and then mm -hmm. any other thing going on at that time. And then I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so my health, um, the process of coming out of that, my... Uh, my dad actually had found this doctor who was, uh, he took a more, kind of a more holistic approach. Um, and it, it was kind of a weird experience, to be honest with you, but it started God to God used help. it. God used it. Yeah, he absolutely used it. And so it's about a year's worth of very, very slow recovery. So all in all, about three years um, time period. Um, walked through, you know, all the different elements of super strict diet, um, super strict therapy routines, just pretty much my whole focus for this year was just recovering mm -hmm. from, from this illness. Um, and on the other side of it, I can remember the first time I, um, I was able to walk. So my mom's, I moved back in with my mom and the distance from her driveway to the next corner was about a quarter of a mile. And I was able to walk down to the corner and back. And that was, that was it. I was it's like a miracle. Day, it was a miracle, yeah. And I can just remember the celebration from that day going, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back. I'm going to live. I'm going to live, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that was, that day still marked in my heart of 
such such a happy day like a literal miracle yeah. in your life mm -hmm. how old were you when that was going on the healing portion of your life um 22 i think is when it was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. there's a there's a sentence that you kept saying when we talked previously mm -hmm. and you kept saying you know the false belief system that was set up when you were young the words that you shared were don't trust be on your guard you're on your own mm -hmm. you know and then you had those interactions with the Lord throughout your life where he showed up time and time again mm -hmm. and you whether it was comforting you through loss even though you didn't understand even though after you doubted coming back to him or healing you or even bringing you the wisdom to make the decision to choose him as opposed to someone who was walking away from him yeah. in relationship you've said in the, that he's been so faithful yeah you said that he's come alongside you and revealed himself in certain ways um, specifically where he's trustworthy and so I would love for you to share just a little bit about any like just imagine people listening in that they've gone through loss of a loved one they've gone through you know maybe even having to say goodbye to a relationship that wasn't from the Lord that's so trialsome your emotions are so wrapped up in some of those things and people have you know I've talked to so many different people who you're in that emotion and it's so overwhelming, overbearing. How would you encourage people to take that to the Lord or, or how would you encourage, you know, and maybe even share how you got through that day to day, that moment to moment? Cause you said, I took a month to pray. Now everybody takes a month to yeah. pray, yeah. Rachel. So that's not most people's go to, you know, we usually we run a man for an answer. Um, tell us a little bit about what it looks like for you in the way of submitting your emotion or bringing it to him. Yeah. Well, I have very strong emotions. <laughs> and this is shocking. <laughs> the, the story of my life is not one of my steadiness by any means. It's one of God's faithfulness because my emotions have been all over the map so many times. And I've failed in, in guarding my heart so many times and I still do. And um, what I've learned is that it doesn't matter how shaken I am by a situation. It doesn't matter how crazy I, I get in any given moment, he doesn't change. Amen. His faithfulness is still there. And so, like I think about um, the period of my illness when I went from kind of a, on a high with the Lord on this mission trip to the depths of, I mean, the, the lowest I can remember being emotionally and physically, and then getting on the other side of it and it's kind of a, a picture of what happens every day you know I got started with God went through the depths and on the other side he was still there and he hadn't changed and that's just the sweetest thing for me is to know that it doesn't matter how I I waver day after day or how much depth I go through through loss or even just my expectations about life not being met he's still there he's he is faithful and that's the one thing that I can, I can always count on. It's, um, it's easy to want people to be the ones that give security. And I think that's part of where I, I would get tripped up is I wanted, I wanted people to resolve this issue in my heart of, can I trust? Can I, you know, feel secure? All these things. Um, and the answer is, I mean, no, life is going to happen. Right. You know, but I, I know every day that he's going to be here tomorrow. And that's really where my, my hope comes from. It's it doesn't matter what today does. That is an incredible truth that not many people land on. Yeah. And it's just, it's so, you're so fortunate to have that deep of a relationship with the Lord to have had that revealed to you. And so just with that said, we'll, we'll kind of end in this place. I wanted to ask, I mean, I see you digging into the Lord in pouring your heart out mm -hmm. to the Lord, spending time with Him one-on-one. -on -one. That's a challenge for people, just that in and of itself, just spending time, right, mm -hmm. with the Lord. Um, okay, going back to each of those circumstances, I'm going to ask you on the spot. I know I didn't prepare you for this, but I, I think you've had enough time with the Lord in each of these circumstances. If you could go back to the relationship, you mentioned a couple of relationships that were tough, loss that was tough. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you who he revealed himself as, mm -hmm. you know, in relationship to young people, maybe even borderline bullying you or causing you to feel rejected by man or kids. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how he would have revealed himself to you at that age then. Um, 
I can speak about each circumstance individually, but the first word that comes to my mind is he's worthy. I mean, at the end of each situation, what it comes down to is he's, he's worthy to stay. He's worthy for me to stay with him and to keep pressing into him. Um, so yeah, that's the broad answer. Yeah. But for each individual circumstance, um, I would say, especially when I was younger, I, I looked at him as my best friend. I would talk to the Holy Spirit, Come even on. you know, being eight, nine, ten years old. I can remember having conversations with the Holy Spirit just outside, going about my day, and didn't feel like I could talk to people, but I could talk to Him. So He was always there, my best friend. Um, I want every kid to hear that because if, <laughs> if some eight, nine, ten, eleven-year-old can hear that truth and knowing you have a best friend if you're willing, yeah, right, yeah. It's incredible that you knew that. And then at the point of loss, both in relationship with your uncle because he passed, but then also loss of hope for marriage, mm -hmm. who, who would God may have revealed, who did he reveal himself as then? Yeah, I think it's, it's different. I mean, in the loss, um, both in loss of my uncle, and then we didn't touch on my parents got divorced. Right. That was another just really tough thing to walk through. But um, he, I would say he was my refuge and he was the one that I would, I would run to. It's just, this hurts and I don't know what to do about it. I mean, it, <laughs> we live in a sin broken world and so sometimes things happen that there's just not really a fix for it. But I can still take my heart to the Lord. That's right. And so he was my refuge in, in those times. I think with um, ending the, the engagement and just that loss of hope, as you called it, that total derailing of expectations um, he was he was the trustworthy one he was my leader you know I was really putting all my faith in you have to decide where this goes because all my plans are gone <laughs> um, and then you know with with the healing I mean healer is the easy one to say right but I, I would also say he was my rock specifically in that circumstance you know day to day when I'm physically all over the place and I'm emotionally all over the place um, and I imagine everyone around you too yes. right yeah. yeah kind of just asking questions and yeah so for him to be your rock had to be you had to feel pretty secure yeah yeah it's incredible I know I don't get to do that with most people ask questions in regards to who God is in circumstances past but I knew I could put you on the spot and ask <laughs> you because I know you've been there with him and I know that he's revealed himself yeah. so specifically and so uniquely to you in each of those circumstances and you've held tight to him mm -hmm. and what we saw uh, when we chatted a, a bit earlier is the through line in your life is God is faithful God is faithful yeah um, if you if you're looking at and I'm gonna ask you to paint the picture of your future together <laughs> and if anyone in, and think of it like this you know people are in the midst of all of these different things and you're able to look on at life going I don't know what's ahead but so if you're able to look on, look forward after going through some of these circumstances that you've been through and so much more, there's more that you've been through since, I mean, that all happened up until 22 and there's still more after <laughs> yes. that. Um, yeah. But how would you go ahead and look at the future and what are you hoping for in your future? Or maybe what, people going through some stuff, what you would challenge them to be hoping for? Yeah, it's, it's funny because I have no idea what my future holds now. <laughs> um, <laughs> All of my all of my plans and expectations are just kind of kind of blank right now, just in another season like that in my life. But what I do expect is that He's going to be here for it, and that I'm going to be walking with the Lord for it. And so, what I what I think about is, if nothing else significant happens in my life, <laughs> probably not going to happen. But if that were the case, and my life was only ever about seeking Jesus from here forward. Is that enough for me? Oh and my goodness! And I can goodness. look back over the course of my life, and I say, yeah, wow, yeah, because he's been so worth it for the last thirty-two years, and I know he's going to be worth it for the next however long I live. I love it. it. You're reminding me of the text in Hebrews that talks about Jesus being the author and the finisher. Mm -hmm of our faith, and then the one where Paul talks about being content. He learned to be content in the set of circumstances that he found himself in, in what he had, you know? And that's what I see in you. I see that you are content 
in what has gone on in your life, content in Him, not in the circumstances, right? You're content, you've found, you've learned to find your contentment in Him, and it's such a pleasure to know you. It's such a pleasure to be such a good friend of yours and to hear the things that God's teaching you, teach me all the time, the wisdom that God's gives you, the maturity that He's given you. You're just such a bright, beautiful light. I just wanna say thank you so much for your willingness to share um, some of the things that you've been through and the way that God has really, truly, genuinely revealed himself to you. He is the author and the finisher of your faith, and I know that he's going to continue the good work that he started in you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Were you going to say something? I was, yeah. Finish us off here. I was just thinking that the hope that we have for tomorrow is not that we're faithful enough, but it's that he's faithful enough. That's right. And it really just comes down to if at the end of the day I can still choose him, I can trust him to be faithful enough for tomorrow. No matter what it is. No matter what it is. I love it. Thank yeah. you so much for being with us today, Rachel. We're so excited to celebrate who God is in your life. We hope um, those of you listening were encouraged to stay steadfast in Him. God is so faithful. Would you pray us out a couple seconds here? Just encouraging those and praying for those that might be listening in that need to hang on to hope from your story. Yeah, yeah, love to. Lord, um, I do lift up all those who are listening to this podcast and I ask that you would put hope in their hearts, that you would put endurance in their hearts, yeah. and um, just that you would reveal yourself as faithful as you are. Just ask that Jesus would be so present in the lives of anyone who is struggling and um, we'd, we'd be willing and humble enough to receive you as the one who is leading our lives. Um, and I just pray for everyone who thinks that their story is over because of some significant event. Lord, I just pray that there would be hope for tomorrow as they as they lean into you and as they learn to know who you are. I pray that you would reveal all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing. We look forward to seeing you next time.